Hi, I'm David Burns, Product Manager for the Cerberus Pro Fire Alarm Portfolio for Siemens Building Technologies. Our how-to video series will walk you through the basic functions for operating and controlling your FC922 252-point panel. The FC922 is part of the Cerberus Pro Compact Networkable Fire Alarm System portfolio. There are two versions available. The first, model FC922, will support up to 252 addressable devices, which can be installed on four Class B signaling line circuits or two Class A signaling line circuits. The second version, model FC924, will support up to 504 addressable devices, which can be installed on eight Class B SLCs or four Class A SLCs. Additional features include built-in notification appliance circuits, programmable auxiliary relays, and 24-volt DC power. Optional modules include NAC expansion, releasing module, digital alarm communication transmitter, or DACT, RS-232 for remote enunciation and data communication, networking capability, as well as voice evacuation. To begin, I will describe the operating unit and go over its main components and features. First, we have the LCD display, which provides constant system status and displays all menu selections, which we will review in another chapter of the how-to video series. The display is backlit and will remain on anytime there is an active event which has not been acknowledged. The display will dim after three minutes of inactivity. In normal standby mode, the display will indicate system status normal with the current time and date. The navigation buttons are used to operate the system and can be used in conjunction with the display to view multiple items on the screen. The keypad, menu button, OK and cancel buttons are used to manage and control the various capabilities within the system, including disable, enable, and view history and sensitivity reports. The power LED will glow steady green to indicate that AC power is on and will flash when the system is operating on battery power. The partial system disabled LED will glow steady yellow to indicate that any device is disabled. Next, we have the internal buzzer. The internal buzzer will sound steady when an unacknowledged event is present and will pulse with unacknowledged supervisory or trouble conditions. When all conditions are acknowledged, the buzzer will be silent. There are several indicator lights. First, and perhaps most important, is the alarm indicator. This will light when any fire alarm is present in the system. Additional indicators include gas alarm, system supervisory, system trouble, and ground fault. The buttons used to manage events are located here. The acknowledge button is pressed to acknowledge active events and will turn off the internal panel buzzer. The signal silence button is pressed to turn off any audibles programmed as silenceable and will light the audibles silenced LED. This also serves as a toggle switch and when pressed again, will reactivate the audibles. The system reset button is pressed to reset the system when authorized. I will now demonstrate the usage of the buttons and LEDs. To acknowledge the alarm, press the Acknowledge button. The local buzzer will be silenced and the alarm LED will change from on flashing to on steady. You'll see on the display, as you acknowledge an event, the exclamation mark changes to a check mark to the left of the device description. To silence the notification appliances after evacuation and where permitted, press the Alarm Silence button. The silenceable notification appliances will be silenced and LED indications will change from flashing to continuous. The audible silenced LED will also be lit. Do not reset the panel until the alarm has been cleared. And just a reminder, alarm silence inhibit, if it is set, prevents the alarm from being silenced for a predetermined time. When the alarm condition is corrected and when authorized to do so, return the panel to normal standby operation by pressing the reset button. A supervisory alarm is indicated by a flashing supervisory LED. The LCD will also display the supervisory condition. 
and the panel buzzer will pulse. To acknowledge the supervisory signal, press the acknowledge button. The supervisory LED will switch from flashing to steady on. When the supervisory condition has been cleared, you may need to reset the panel to restore to a normal standby condition. Trouble is indicated by a flashing system trouble LED, and the LCD will also display the trouble condition. The panel buzzer will be pulsing. To acknowledge the trouble, press the acknowledge button. The trouble LED will switch from flashing to steady on. When the trouble condition has been cleared, you may need to reset the panel to restore to a normal standby condition. Just a reminder, devices in a trouble condition may not report a fire alarm. In order to view different active events, simply use the four-way navigation buttons to scroll through to view different events. Thank you for watching this presentation. We hope this video will help your team effectively operate your Cerberus Pro fire alarm system. Please feel free to reach out with your future fire and life safety needs. Siemens, ingenuity for life.